In the realm of Python data processing, Pandas has been the reigning champion for years. It's hailed as the go-to library for data manipulation and analysis. But today, we're on the brink of a revolution. A challenger approaches, promising to outperform Pandas in exciting new ways. Stick around as we uncover how Polars is not just challenging the status quo, but may be on its way to dethroning Pandas for good. Pandas is one of the most flexible number crunching libraries in the Python ecosystem. Originally based on NumPy, it's a package for manipulating tabular data extremely quickly. Its ability to handle all sorts of mixed data from tables to time series has made it an essential tool in any data scientist's toolbox. Pandas' high-level abstractions make slicing and dicing data an absolute breeze. Despite a slightly non-Pythonic syntax, Pandas is relatively easily picked up by beginners and experienced users alike, and the strong community support and plentiful educational resources make this even simpler. On top of this, it's one of the most well-integrated libraries in the data science stack. It seamlessly integrates with other libraries like SciPy, Matplotlib, and Scikit-learn, and is used for everything from financial and analysis to machine learning. If it's that great, surely it'll never be replaced, right? Well, hold your horses. Pandas has definitely become the industry standard, but it's not perfect. Pandas is written in C, and is primarily a single-threaded library. Writing parallel code in Pandas is difficult, which is the reason for libraries like Dask, which can parallelize your Pandas code. On top of that, most Pandas data frame methods clone the entire data frame, so memory usage can be high, and performance can take a hit when working with large data sets. And even though you can pick up the basics of Pandas pretty quickly, its extensive API can be a bit of a drawback, as mastering all of its functions and methods can be tricky. Polars is a multi-threaded data frame library written in Rust. It was written from the ground up for parallelism and high performance on modern hardware. Its syntax is very SQL-esque, which simplifies the learning curve drastically and means you can use your existing data wrangling skills. Personally, I find it a lot more readable than Pandas, but if you've been a data scientist for a little while, you may disagree. Polars also leverages lazy evaluation to greatly enhance performance. Unlike Pandas, which executes eagerly whenever you call a function, you can choose to execute a Polars query only once the query is fully constructed using a lazy frame. This allows the Polars query engine to optimize and run the minimum number of operations. It's also a huge boon for memory too, as Polars may only need to clone the data frame once, not once per operation. As an additional benefit, Polars is completely interoperable with Pandas. Polars data frames can be converted to and from Pandas data frames, and both Pandas and Polars use Apache Arrow as the underlying data format, making the transition even easier. Polars has SDKs for both Rust and Python, and the ever-growing community is contributing more every day. But that's enough dithering about. Let's talk performance. In order to gauge the performance of the two libraries, I decided to run some analysis on two large data sets. The first is the famous New York City taxi trip data set. I'll be using the data for yellow taxis for August 2023, and I'll be using this for traditional number crunching tests. Second up is a data set of 50,000 movie reviews from IMDb. This is mostly text, so we can use it to gauge the performance of Polars and Pandas in large-scale text processing and analysis. I'll leave the link to both data sets in the description. And while you're down there anyway, you might as well subscribe. The New York City taxi trip data is stored in parquet format, which both Pandas and Polars can read, but which can read it faster. The first benchmark will be a pure data load speed test, which of the two libraries can most efficiently load the dataset into memory. For reference, the file is about 50 megabytes of binary data. It's worth noting that Pandas requires an external library, either Pyro or FastParquet, to load Parquet files, whereas Polar supports them out of the box. For the benchmarks, I'll be running the code 100 times, deleting the data frame after each run to free up memory. In the load test, Polars comes out on top by far, able to load the data about twice as fast as Pandas. Next, I'll see which library can group the data fast. I'll be grouping by the vendor ID column and calculating the sum and mean of the trip distance columns for each vendor. For Polars, I'll be running benchmarks in both eager and lazy mode to see how much difference the query optimizer makes here. This result really surprised me. I expected Polars to be faster due to its built-in parallelism, but it was around four to five times faster than Pandas. Lazy evaluation made little difference in this test, as it's just a single operation. For the next benchmark, I'll run a chain of operations. I'll filter trips for those with a minimum distance of three miles before calculating the total fare with tips, grouping by location, taking the mean, sorting by the total fare descending and taking the top 10 results. This time around, the lazy evaluation made a huge difference. Eager Polars was about seven times faster than Pandas, but lazy Polars twice as fast again. I also ran the script under memory, a memory profiler for Python developed by Bloomberg. Looking at the generated flame graph, over the course of the entire benchmark, the Polars Eager chain allocated about 70 times less memory than Pandas. The Polars Lazy chain doesn't even show up on the graph. I'll have all the code as well as the memory outputs on GitHub, link in the description. For the IMDB dataset, I decided to get the word count of each review after first removing any HTML tags and any punctuation. Again, Polars was about three times faster than Pandas. This is likely because Polars rewrote a string implementation from scratch in order to boost 
performance. Interestingly, Lazy Polars wasn't any faster than Eco Polars. There wasn't much difference at all, in fact, and they gave the same results pretty much every time. So I've shown that Polars is generally faster and more memory efficient than Pandas. But my results aren't going to be representative of what you'd see in production. I was running under Windows Subsystem for Linux with a host of background processes. In reality, you'll see very different results. Polars has, however, been run through a set of industry standard benchmarks, which I will link in the description. In general, the Polars blog is a really interesting read, so I definitely recommend checking it out. So what are you going to do? Are you going to stick with Pandas or will you be the winner in your company who spearheads a migration to Polars? Let me know in the comments. In the meantime, if you'd like to know how to create libraries like Polars yourself, you're going to need to learn how to write Rust extensions for Python. Funnily enough, I've got a video on that and it'll be on screen now.